you might have to tick somewhere here because I can't hear you. Now I hear you. Okay, it seems it just seems to take a little bit of time. Is that better right now? Much better. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Brilliant. Um, so, Tats, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. Um, Japan seems to not be that phased, as you can see by uh, outside. We've still got people on the streets. Oh, yeah, let me see, let me see. So, for everybody watching, you know, we are at our Tokyo gallery space, which is in Ginza. Ginza is high fashion uh, 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 um, street, it's like Fifth Avenue in New York, or Kudam in Berlin, or um, Bond Street in London. You see, what's opposite? We are in the MCM building. This is, um, um, MCM is a Korean-owned, uh, German-rooted uh, 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 fashion label. And opposite is, what is this? It's a uh, Matsuya Ginza. It's a, um, it's a large retail store. Yeah. As you can see, the Olympics are uh, quite well advertised. They're still, they're still, at this point, they're still happening, no? At this point in time, uh, there's no plans on canceling. And so everything is open? Stores are open? Um, retail stores are open, restaurants are open, however, schools are not open, museums generally are not open, and I believe some theatres have closed. And tell me, what's opposite? Opposite is, uh, go to the left? No, down, down? Yeah, what is this? It's like, oh, Louis Vuitton, Bulgari, yeah, so very, forth, getting... And then and you have uh, Tiffany's and then so on. So it's a pretty uh, luxurious piece of real estate here on Chuodogi, which is the main street. Of and, and is it still the case on weekends? It's, it's interesting for people who haven't been in, in, in Ginza. They lock down the street. There's, no more, there's no, no more cars driving. It's all pedestrian. And then it's like a, it's like a, a, a shopping fest. Is that still happening yes. or do, don't they do that anymore? So every weekend that is still the case. Um, today being the first of spring uh, and cherry blossoms are out. Uh, it's a public holiday and it was closed again today. Uh, they usually close down the main street from 12 to 5 p.m. And how many people are, uh, are coming? Uh, is it, the gallery is it... itself, I mean, it's still pretty low numbers because, I mean, galleries due to the coronavirus maybe probably i'd say 20 people a day and no but i mean is it is it is it packed on the street um just today because i mean it was 21 degrees it was kind of the first day of seeing cherry blossoms everyone's i guess sick of being hoarded into their houses so i guess it was a good excuse to come out because here in germany you we really like uh, I think on, on, on Monday they're going to announce that, there's a, that you're not allowed to go without reason on the street anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah. No like way, they did in Vienna and so on. Friendly. Anyway, anyway, this is not a... Let's, let's look into the, uh, into the show. Okay, so okay. You, you, for people to understand, you know, what is this, sanitizer? <laughs> yeah. So we were instructed <laughs> by MCM to have <laughs> okay, uh, we're hand sanitizer. Service-oriented. Um, service yeah, so we got the press release the floor map and then of course the hand very good very good so go lo, go to the um look look back from the elevator so people understand we're in the fifth floor so you come uh, out six. of the elevator so we're on six. the six. Oh, sorry yeah so you come out of the elevator and then you on the you right hand side <laughs> yeah okay and, and then, then you go uh to the show and the titles here we started off on the 5th of march um, and we were pretty much doing graffiti up until the 4th, and you are introduced to Anselm's first piece just here. I mean, the, the graffiti, maybe we walk a little bit further. Okay, yeah. And take, so here you see it's like, we, we, try, to, uh, we try to keep it, the space, as raw uh, as possible, so it's like, like kind of, uh, re uh, it's, it's, it's gi gigantic. Uh, it's the biggest gallery in Tokyo, I guess because everything, right? Is that the case? Um, I'd make a strong case for it, that's for sure. Where, yeah. uh, and we left the, the concrete parts open where we could, and um, can I make this bigger now? And, oops. Um, and, and so Anzem did this graffiti on the wall, 
And it's interesting, he, he told me there's no graffiti in Japan. I mean, that's not entirely the case. However, I've been told from a lot of uh, people visiting that uh, Japan is relatively clean, that the streets, you don't really see much graffiti. However, I mean, if you go down to like the not so nice regions of Shinjuku or Shibuya and uh, Nakano, that there's plenty of graffiti. It's there, just maybe hidden to most visitors' eyes. Yeah, and, and I think he was interested in like a mix between calligraphy, tagging, and of course informal uh, painting. Maybe you give us a little bit uh, of uh, a, a tour through all the different works, what he's doing there, and, and so on. Well, um, we'll start with, I guess, leading from the elevator into this piece. Uh, it's quite a large piece. I believe it's uh, one and a half meters by one and a half meters square using neon colors with the camouflage edges. Uh, this is a 2019 piece. Yeah, what I think what's great here is that he, that he creates these like complementary colors and it's, it's, it's very three-dimensional pasty paint, right? Like if you look from the side, it has a real... Yes, it comes out a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I mean, it's like beautiful and ugly at the same time. Yes, and he was very peculiar when uh, he was putting or installing it on the wall to make sure that the background graffiti accented the piece. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So you can see, see it mixes mm -hmm. quite well. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's a new sort of... Uh, he's doing these works since maybe like a year, one and a half years. Okay. And then we move on to, this is also a 2019 piece, um, kind of, I guess, what you call a traditional Anson piece uh, with the acrylic box and the foil. Yeah, I would say it's a combination, right? It's like these, it's like you see the foil and, and then they have, they have this gestural um, um, splash below. Well, he's also got the graffiti paint within, which is sort of something new that I've never seen. In I mean, it's, uh, it, it also kind of makes sense in the Ginza because he, uh, surrounded, because he, I, I, I think that he got these um, silver foils from, you know, from like, uh, it's like a cheap material turned into um, like a, almost like a Malevich square turned into something, you know, like a, like a, um, a shopping window decoration uh, declared painting or so. Um, and maybe you can turn a right. That's my favorite, yep. most favorite show, uh, most favorite piece here, the one on the right, the neon combination. Maybe you can look into this a little bit more. Yeah, so this is, this was one of the more complex pieces to install. Uh, uh, let me, let me, let me switch off the comments. Yeah, it's good, exactly. Uh, so can you step back a little bit? And thanks yep. for the remark. I, I agree. All these comments, you can't see anything. So, yeah, maybe you t tell me about it. Uh, this was one of the more complex pieces, as you know. Um, Anselm makes all of these pieces uh, in Europe, uh, and the voltage is different. So when we're trying to apply the current through the neons, we've got to change transformers, um, install them within the wall. So you'll find that the leads just go straight in in a nice, clean look. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a transformer behind there, changing the watts and making sure. Can we see a bit more of the, of the, of the, um, uh, how the you call it? Close up? Yeah, and the and the thing you put a table on usually. Oh yeah, the horse. The horse is uh, one of his studio horses apparently, and he's been using it for years. And so you've got some nice paint blotches that have accumulated over his. Oh, beautiful. Works. Yes, I know them. I tried to convince Anzem actually to make kind of an addition out of them. You know, that you can, that because he has, can I the see more of, the, of this? Wow. It's like all these acid neon colors from the paintings. How, how many did you ship? Only one? Yeah, it was, this is the only one in the whole exhibition. Because I tried to convince him to do an, you know, like, um, Limited edition because they're all unique, but like repeating and you could like put a glass top on it and have a great uh, side table anyway. So it's like a combination of neon coming out of the painting, silver foil, linen, 
Uh, and this piece <laughs> also has the sort of black graffiti splosh marks that yeah. work well with the uh, spray paint in the uh, white walls. And then to the left? And to the left, we've just got... Oh, that's piece. only the graffiti on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the piece in this corner, mm -hmm. which sort of moves in onto this huge uh, ceramic piece. Oh, and what kind of surface is this? So he used a uh, metallic... <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> like, um, it's funny, you know, you like, you start moving this because I think I have a control over what you're doing, but of course I don't. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like, I want to look into details, so I move the camera around. Can you I'm go a bit closer? closer? Yeah. Uh, he, he, there's like a, um, uh, it relates to... Japanese uh, ceramic tradition too, somehow? You know, th th there's a certain treatment. If it breaks, they, they still treat it? Or tell me a bit about it. Oh, there is a uh, Japanese uh, ceramic, I guess you could say, like, repair work art. And it's called Kinzuki, which is where if a ceramic is broken, they attach it together using uh, sometimes gold, sometimes um, softer materials. Uh, yep. But I believe this is just um, Magnum, I think it is, that he said that he was using for the ceramic glaze over the top that made it so shiny. And mm -hmm. yeah, did, I don't know if you saw that, Tuts. We have these, we have these um, in, standing in our, in our courtyard. Do oh, you no, see on the screen? Very colorful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think this new uh, metallic style is, is new. These are a little older. And, yes. and this one is also broken. I don't know how much you see from here. That's my absolute favorite. And you see the, 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 the drips oh, are well, hanging down. Yeah. And they're put on silver pedestals. Uh, are these on silver pedestals too? No. These are on black. So this one called Space Unity is on black pedestal. Uh, it was made this year. Yeah. But, okay, uh, let's, let's continue heavy. on the show. Um, I guess we'll move to this wall here probably our largest wall and it's got on some smaller works all the way across and this is quite reminiscent of his when he spray painted that haystack silver I guess in 2012 and it has all of his metal shavings in the box mm-hmm mm-hmm these two were also made 2020. Can you go a bit back to understand the scale? Yep. <clears throat> oh, okay, they're way smaller. Oh, and there's another smaller one with neon as well. Yes. So you've got three similar pieces side by side. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the one with the neon here. And originally he used to find these neon elements. I think he still does sometimes like find rebuilds or really actually find buys on second hand shops or eBay and then it, it reintegrates them. Like uh, this is it so was some advertising aid for something. And then to the left. is a piece oh that's nice from 2019 yes with the natural almost yarn canvas yeah linen in the no back. is it linen Jute. yeah like uh yeah natural i don't know the name again with the clean foil in the acrylic case beautiful and then in front of these four pieces here we have the remaining ceramics. And it's nice, the neon reflects in the ceramic. Yes, as you can see with the small one here. Yeah. You can see all the colors. Are they suitable for outside as well? Yes. So this one is Deja Vu. And this is Host of a New Monster, which is a little less metallic than the two 
uh, ones there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you and can sure. see, these two both have the same markings. Oh, it's, yeah. And show me these colorful paintings to the right. So we've got one, two. Mm -hmm. Can you go a little bit uh, in front and stand still? This one, yeah. I mean, and I find that whole gesture great with a with a spray paint, but it's not so easy to identify the painting. You know, it's a bit mm -hmm. like the stirps. They're so I saw them in the studio before they left, and they're so strong, and I find that the clear view is a bit distracted. So it's like a really overall experience. I mean, as hard as we try on Instagram, I mean, these shows need to be experienced in person, huh? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And the other one? Is there, you know, he, or he, he, he has this kind of like signature uh, of, uh, of this paint tin, which, he, which looks like a mistake that it was like left on the painting. That's not the case yeah. here, I think, no? No, I haven't. I was looking for that throughout, like, just before we were talking, and I couldn't see the um, signature logo, I think he calls it. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was... But wasn't there one also where the neon is, is overlapping? Um... Is there a third one of those? No, this is it. So the okay. entire... And to the right, look to the right, the right, 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 more to the right, right. What's on this wall here? Oh, this that's wall it. is just the background for, uh, uh, this for this ceramic, piece. Ah. yeah. Ah, okay, okay. And let's have a quick look into the viewing room. <clears throat> okay. I hope it's tidied up. <laughs> it should be. Tidy. We have guests. <laughs> Jeez, okay, it's, it's the last minute dash, but we've got the uh, posters here. So Anselm's uh -huh. poster. And yeah, is it they're signed, right? People can pick them up. Um, all the signed ones have been taken, so there was close to, I believe, uh, 50 okay. uh, that were signed. So we have free. Oh, we we always do that in Tokyo. So if anybody of you like comes early to a show, you get a signed, um, you get a signed poster by the artist. Or, or most of the during time. the opening, yeah, it'll with be Rino's, yeah, yeah, Rino's van der Feyde, Jürgen Teller, they all did that to activate a bit. It's it's so different uh, art scene in Tokyo. I mean, like our openings, we had to stop serving alcohol. In Tokyo, we give it out for free. So anyway, uh, yeah, this was Erwin Wurm here to the left. Yes, we've got these uh, two. Yeah. Two I think with this one we just sold, people. no? Um, Isn't the handbag sold to Korea? Oh, anyway. I have to double check, yeah. <clears throat> and um, OK, Sausage Man. Then yep. what we got here? Oh yeah, look. Let's look at this Andrea Schmitten drawing. Yeah, closer, closer, closer. How do people respond? <laughs> How do people respond to that? A lot of people ask me if it's an instruction manual. It is. Um, which yeah, I show them the catalog and the various sort of I guess uh, what would you call it? like figures in textbook sort of esque drawings. Yeah. Which they get a good laugh out of. Okay, uh, here, let's do the, to the, uh, Annette Cam. We're going to show her in Tokyo. Uh, uh, when, actually? Uh, Parallel to later on, I think. Yeah. And Green and Dragset, Norbert Bisky, Michael Zeitzdorfer, Alicia Prada, Robert Janitz. Okay, dokey. So um, let's see if there's some questions. Uh, okay. Gold. Is it gold? Oh, Katsuya. no. It's what about gold? With a metallic uh, coating, I think, okay. I believe that he's talking about the sculptures. Oh, yeah, exactly. This is a good one. What are the titles of the work? Uh, so. Only I think it's re I think it's three it refers to have... it refers to answer. Maybe we go back to them. Yeah. 
So most of the pieces are called Untitled. Um, however, he has given names to the three uh, ceramics. So we have Space Unity, this one right here. Yep. We have Host of a New Monster, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. And then Deja Vu. You know, I mean, we're going to ask, we're going to... Uh, we're going to meet Ansem later this week, and he's going to show us his studio. He's also in isolation in, in Berlin, and he has a beautiful studio, um, and he will show us what he's working on, I think, on Wednesday. I don't know, it's, I don't know how far ahead we are scheduled. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to meet uh, Alicia Quade, and on Sunday, we have an open call. Um, so I'm going to just pick... Um, so people, uh, artists are invited uh, to to kind of sign in, like ask for a request to be included in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this chat. And I'm just going to pick some, and then we're going to talk about your work. You're going to show me quick, and not me only, also to all the viewers. And, um, and then we're going to do that for 25 minutes, and then there's a uh, five-minute Q&A at the end of, the, of it where I, I'm happy to provide some uh, career advice. You know, it's like if you have questions... Um, uh, what's important, how to get to an art school, or how to, whatever. And, uh, ask me anything. So, uh, back to this one. Um, uh, how is the art market in Tokyo? The art market is steadily rising, especially with the um, exposure that uh, a lot of our collectors have been giving us. I guess Maizawa is a big one. Especially you want to flip the you want to flip the camera? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's definitely been able to give us world exposure and sort of made sure that Tokyo is serious about sort of its culture moving to the art scene. Um, galleries popping up. I mean, Kune Gallery, uh, Peotan opened up like a couple of years ago, and uh, we see more and more activity with uh, art fairs in Japan. Um, I think we've got two new art fairs that were scheduled for the end of this year. Um, a new Tokyo art fair that's opened up uh, last year, so gross. Okay, and then this, is yeah. <laughs> this is a funny one. This is a funny one. Well, we have the artist on site for uh, confirmation, but Anselm's also very thorough when it comes to his instructions uh, and instructions that he gives out uh, to his art handlers. And uh, he puts an instruction manual inside of every box that comes sent in a crate. But also also on the other, on the paintings, there's always a mark on the back. Like if you see a Gerd Richter, it says, but actually it's kind of a funny story. We had a Gerd Richter painting and my father did the big Gerd Richter retrospective and he was a best man to my parents and so on. But we had a Gerd Richter abstract painting hung upside down in our kitchen <laughs> for a couple of years, but it's an abstract painting, so that easily, <laughs> easily can happen. Um, then sometimes artists say also it doesn't matter how you hang it. Um, is there... Oh, good question. No, the other materials are not recycled. Um, and I think, I'm not 100% sure, but sometimes I think the neons are appropriated. So he, he, he kind of rebuilds them because it's not so easy always to reuse neon um, or to, to source a neon to find all these different neon elements. Um, uh, Tats, there's a question for you. How is reception of Western art to a Japanese audience? Um, I mean, Japanese people more, I guess, look at Western art as, because it's more active in the contemporary scene and you find that the big art fairs are always overseas, that they're always interested in seeing the larger, bigger names of um, the Western contemporary art scene. Um, so there is an interest uh, with Anselm especially um, just because he's been here before and uh, he's in Japanese collections. So um, 
I, would I think say also the, Takeshi Murakami is a big. Uh, he showed him, and he's a friend, and he collects him. And, yeah, so uh, Anson was able to have his show, I think, in 2008 with Kageki B. And then he also had a couple of pieces in his 2016 Superfly collection. Oh, actually, there's a great portrait. Uh, yeah, there's a great portrait Takeshi did of Anson. I, I see if I find it and post it later. Um, who is the next artsy exhibiting at that space in Tokyo? Uh, it's, it's Sarah Morris and Alexander Kluge, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and I think we should, we should ship the work there um, if we get it out of New York and, and Munich, and then we just stay put and put it up as soon as we can, but we can talk about this later. Um, but I really want to move forward with this. Um, uh, yeah. Ask you as an economist, Tats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I would say the art market in Japan, uh, just given its proximity to mainland Asia, um, is pretty steady. Whatever happens, I mean, the coronavirus is one thing, is probably the biggest thing hitting us right now, just with um, logistics, pieces going in and out, even clients being able to attend shows. However, with um, the new VR online viewing systems and um, people not actually having to physically go PDFs, emails. I in my opinion, in, as usual. in my in my opinion, these viewing rooms make no sense at all because what's the experience to to see some yeah. simulated room? I really find it. Um, I rather have a picture and and maybe something in relation to scale to understand the size. But, yeah, especially um, when it comes to neon pieces. Like yeah. This. Uh, what's the meaning behind the reflections integrated in many of his works? Um, I think he he wants to he he plays on that on that edge of you know of of beautiful and and terrible or like or kitsch and and he plays with our um, you know like we are imp like like almost like plastic toys for kids. You know you like impressed by it. You like it, but at the same time, you know, it's, you shouldn't. So, you know, like, uh, and that's why probably Takeshi likes it. Uh, because same there with like big eyes. And uh, so he, he, uh, he, it's like from trash to treasure. He, he transforms these cheap materials into like desirable objects. Um, uh, and often it's very simple gesture, you know, like, um, so I think he's like a, also a conceptual artist uh, or mainly. Um, and then there's this one for you, Tuts. In what ways the Tokyo art scene so different? Um, I would say that just given Japan's uh, retail consumer culture, that a lot of Japanese people will walk through, they'll see the exhibition, they'll get a feel for it, but then contact you at a later date. There's never really, sales-wise, a then and there, yeah, I want this. Um, they don't want money handed over, in person, seen. Everything's done oh, by yeah, email I, basis. I remember you said that we, when we built out the space and we're planning on the architecture, you said we need it absolutely essential to have a room of privacy, right? Just the room where, yeah, dealings can be talked in private. It's a very one-on-one. -on -one yeah, sort of we don't have that in London. And... In London, it's like all open up. So um, I think also it's, I mean, we, like in, 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 in Europe, we have all these tons of, or especially in Germany, we have all these Kunstverein, Kunsthalle, museums, you know, the federal. Um, and in Tokyo, there are not so many. I mean, the museum, the Mori Museum, where Xiao Shiota, for example, had an amazing show. It's a private museum. Right? It's, there's no these, not these public. And Metzava, who you mentioned, he mounted yeah, that. Metzava, yeah. um, he, he made that amazing Basquiat show, which was up when yeah. I came. And also the Oko, Okoyama Triennial, which was fantastic. Also privately organized. So it's a very. And then interesting, I mean, we are in a, we are in a, in a luxury brands building, um, Ginza 6, I believe. 
Yes. Uh, uh, no, no, yeah, no. So we're in MCM that's close to Ginza 6. It's no, Ginza no, I know, I know, I know where we oh, are. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, is it, it's called Ginza 6 or Ginza 8? Ginza 6. Is Ginza the 6. Store that's close yeah, by, it's yeah. a department store. And in the department store, they do art projects. There's a gallery in the department store. In Asia, you have way more this mix of commerce and art, like what Adrian Cheng does in, 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 in China for K11. Um, okay, so... Um, uh, no, the graffiti is only for this exhibition. Ansem Riley came to Tokyo to do it himself. This is like the art, the master's hand on the wall. Um, so let's go quickly now. Ansem working on other future shows. Yeah, of, of course he does. Oh, actually, we were planning to do a big show for Gallery Weekend, which we uh, hopefully do in September now because um, Gallery Weekend is postponed. Um, uh, was at BNKR. Um, uh, so I think we wrap it up now. Maybe this one for the Sunday session. Um, it's not actually only for art students. It's like anybody. You know, I wouldn't make that difference. So because I I don't know who's who's applying or who's signing in on Sunday. Um, I don't want to. We don't take unsolicited uh, uh, portfolios because we just can't process them and it doesn't make sense to send them to us because we don't have capacity to look at them. But on Sunday, I'm gonna look at and just for everybody to look and, and I don't know, in this phase of isolation, communicate a little bit and, and connect. And I mean, it's, um, it's an experiment. Um, so just just sign in and, uh, and of course I'm gonna do it again if it, if it, will, if it, will, be, um, if it will make sense. So I'm gonna take one last question. Uh, I let this one. Yeah, I can't read the full. Can you read it to me? Because because for me, oops, <laughs> that's my kid's uh, room. Uh, uh, you think the trash treasure works can be issue for the session in? How does it continue? This can is you in read the it future, tough? similar like hashtag dblpng. I don't understand that question. Uh, uh, let's look at this one and then we stop. Let me choose in Japanese living. What, what does it? Uh, Japanese living, can you notice a tendency in, I can't read the end of it, but I guess it's in artwork sold. Um, one thing that I'd like to sort of remind artists that are coming into this space, and it's even with this space, as big as it is, it's a huge space. It's the entire floor of one building. However, the elevators are only a certain size. So the basic thumb of rule is no matter how big of a collector you are, no, no matter what floor your penthouse is on, you're always going to get uh, your limitations to sort of the elevator that takes it up to that floor. Um, I, I experience so, crazy stuff like, for example, that we put paintings on, on in Manhattan on the top of an elevator. So... So, uh, you know, you, 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 you drive the elevator down and then you open the door and then you put the painting on top of the elevator and, uh, and lift it up. But very important at this stage, we are not, uh, uh, we're not an art shop. We like in a, a, a contemporary art gallery, we do real, the exhibitions mean a lot to us in that sense that we give the artist a lot of freedom. And then we are not really much doing things with a plan on, okay, we, we, we present that product or painting or however you want to call it and then we try to to find some client but of course we do as well but in the in the so we do the show and then we we, we take it from there and we we see if we find someone uh, that fits to so so we believe in a good show is selling a work at the side rather than uh, pushing the show too much into a direction that it looks commercial. Okay, I think that's it for now. Uh, Tats, thank you so much. Um, Heidi so Orsch, guys. And um, we speak uh, later today. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank you.